In 2018, Pool Bay Rotary Club did a project called Pirates, Castaways and Codfish. It was all about Pool's maritime history from 1580 to 1730. This video is of one of three plays. This time it's about the pirates. No, not the local pirates, but the pirates of the Caribbean. People like Blackbeard, Edward Thatch, Charles Vane, Benjamin Hornigold, Calico Jack Rackham, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, the famous women pirates. Their so-called golden age of piracy came to a rapid end when a pool boy who'd grown up to be first royal governor of the Bahama Islands, Woods Rogers, had to tussle with them to make his job a success. Have you heard of Woods Rogers? No, you should have. Watch the video and find out all about him from the pirates concerned. Safe and sound at home again, let the waters roar, Jack. Safe and sound and home again, let the waters roar, Jack. Long we tossed on the rolling main, now we're safe ashore, Jack. Don't forget your old shipmates. Oi, 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 oi. This is Jack and Joe now. Long we tossed on the rolling main. Now we're safe and sure, Jack. Don't forget your old shipmates. For oi, 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 oi. the best of friends must part. Fair or foul the weather. Hand your flipper for a shake. Now we we'll drink together. Long we tossed on the rolling main. Now we're safe and sure, Peter Joyf, and here we are at the King Steps Pool Quay, where Woods Rogers and his friend Robert are fishing. The year is 1693, and Pool is a small town of about 2,000 souls who live in what is virtually an island in the harbour. A town small enough for people to know most everybody else. When I met them that morning, I was walking towards my vessel, which was provisioning along the quay. The lads had had a little bit of luck and they were anxious to get home for their breakfast. I remember our conversation like it was yesterday. And Woods, Rogers and I have corresponded from time to time ever since. Well, Robert, where we are now, we caught by. I reckon you will be enough for breakfast, don't you? I would. To eat for me, you and your mother and mother to cook. Sounds about right. Look, lively. Here's Peter Trolliff coming. On his way to the sea adventure along the quay. He'll have us talking every one day if we're not careful. He should be busy, though. They leave on tonight's tide for La Rochelle in Bordeaux. The cart just went down with the cargo. Cloth and barrels of beer. Yeah, so we'll be asking what we do with ourselves and what our life ambitions are. It is always the same though. What you learning at school, my boy? How's your sailing going? What sort of life are you attending? Yeah, you won't like it if I tell I'm not going to sea. Never mind you, Finland Fisher. I ain't going up there. It's too far away. You can't even be sure I'm coming back again. Hello, boys, how are you doing? 
Are they biting this time, Ronnie? Not as quick as we like him to, Captain Peter. We've been here now fishing for breakfast. If they don't hurt, it will be lunchtime. But we really want a couple more. All of them, Robert! I think you've got one biting on the end of your line now! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, what is your father about today? I've got a message, I've got to get to him. No, I'm sorry, Captain. He went off to Bristol yesterday and headed to Newfoundland on Thursday's tide. We won't see him for a couple months or more. Well, oh, we'll just have to wait then. I didn't know he was off so soon. Hey, I thought you'd be going with him this time. Oh, I was promised I'll go with him next year for the fishing season. He thinks I can handle some inshore line fishing and learn all about the processing. He's talking to Mr. Yeemans at Bristol about an apprenticeship for me. The after, we'll be 15. Oh, that'll be great experience for you, Woods. And I'm sure you'll be able to handle the fishing now. All the sailing you've done here at boats over the years. <laughs> yes, pool's a great place to learn the ropes. Yes, sir, that's right. With friends I've taken so took them back from Lymington. And we still have to know if not one back all has the quarries. Well, I've been out with all weathers but New Finland as big as the as I expect. My father's been in shore fishing there for years. He said it's hard work doing it with the salt pot till it's dry enough to carry back. His tales of the journey scare me though. Fogs, storms, icebergs and pack ice, I'm blown if I'll do it. Yes, it's a hard life alright. But pool men's dried salt cod is the very best there is for storing and fetches a high price in the hot countries. So, Robert, if Newfoundland's not for you, what do you plan to do then? Oh, if nothing else, I'd make a good knocker up for me. <laughs> I'm up and early most mornings. Although it would be not enough to go to bed earlier, so it wouldn't do for long. <laughs> I suppose I'll try to get a job down at the rope ball. Rope making will be a good job forever. If I work hard, maybe I'll get to be mayor of Blue one day. <laughs> now I could do that job. All he does, seems to me, is tell the people what to do. I'd be good at that. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've got a plan there, Robert. And who knows, with hard work and clean living, you might end up as mayor of Poole yet. But what about you, Woods, and when you've done your seven-year apprenticeship? Well, sir, my family's moving to Bristol next year. Oh. Grandfather needs more help for the shipping business. And father's having a house built for us to live in on Green mm. Square, right by the docks. I shall follow father's footsteps on a new phone and run once I'm trained. But if what I hear is right, then I won't be doing that for long. Why, boy? How do you mean? The fishermen's stories say how cold it is and dangerous. The sailing back and forth, what with policy and dirt elements. I'm told people tried for 60 years to create settlements there, but they failed all just lately, because of the extreme weather. I hate our cold winters in the pool, never mind them out there. I'm told there's more chance to make a fortune in places like the South Sea or the Caribbean where it's warmer. <laughs> All I want to be an adventurer, all I need is a letter of mark, and to be making my own private voyages and projects. Then, I can make my fortune, in warmer times. Well, sounds like you've got a life plan there too, Woods. Yeah, but remember, a privateer's life can be profitable, but it can be very dangerous too. I mean, particularly when you're, you're attacking places and, and merchant vessels. What? Even here, in the English Channel, we can't be sure of a safe arrival of our goods because of theft of cargoes. And often, the boats between crews can have dangerous consequences. Uh, take my advice uh, and stick to, to merchant venturing if you can. Well, Woods, maybe we can make do with these again for our breakfast then? Why, oh, yes, Robert. I think we can. Oh, I can see you as made, you know. <laughs> I can smell them fish cooking already. Oh, I'm starving. We'll take our leave, Captain Peter, and wish you Godspeed on your voyage tonight. Oh, are you going for salt? The trip to Lower Shell? Or is it wine or board about George Flint to Biscay? Well, the wine is a big attraction for selling on here, but the salt is essential if the pool vessels are to get off to Newfoundland in good time this year. Well, 
I'll be back late next week. So enjoy your breakfast, boys, and good morning to you. Good boy, sir. Pool sailors have been fishing in Newfoundland waters for over 100 years. It was a three-way trade by boat from Poole to Newfoundland and down to Southern Europe. Moving materials for fish production across the Atlantic and the finished product going down the coast to the Carolinas or back across to Portugal and Spain. There to pick up spirits, wine and other goods to sell on here. Woods Rogers family moved from Poole to Bristol in 1697. And over the next few years, he crewed a number of Newfoundland voyages until his father died in 1705. After losing several vessels and their cargoes to French privateers in the English Channel, Woods had to improve his prospects. So he planned, organized, and commanded his own privateering venture and set sail from Bristol around the world in 1708. His letter of marque from the king licensed him as a privateer to attack and seize any vessels, goods, and cargoes from ships from nations at war with England. He found backers, mainly merchants, to invest, and he set sail in two ships, the Duke and the Duchess, with 330 men returning to Bristol in 1711. Now, Woods realized that privateering was a more profitable prospect than previously, whereas the Crown had taken one-fifth of all prize goods now, it was all divided between <coughs> investors, officers, and crew. But Woods's prime aim was to seize a Spanish treasure galleon sailing between Manila and Acapulco in the Pacific. Well, Woods Rogers' voyage round the world was an eventful one. They found a castaway on a Pacific island off Chile, raided Guayaquil City in Ecuador, captured a Manila galleon, and engaged its larger protection vessel. Prizes seized were worth 200,000 pounds back then. That's 20 million today. Wood suffered some injuries in the sea battles. Returning a national hero, it nevertheless took six years to divide the assets. Eventually, Rogers received £1,500, a captain's wages for a few Newfoundland voyages. So, once again, Woods had to improve his prospects. In 1716, he engaged on another privateering project, this time to establish the first British colony in the Bahamas. He would have to deal with a great many pirates there first, but King George I agreed to issue a free pardon to any pirates who would mend their ways. So, in May 1717, George I's act of grace led to many pirate pardons, including that of Benjamin Hornigold, the first man to declare New Providence to be the Pirates' Republic. In this scene, you will meet many famous pirates. In an inn, in New Providence, Bahamas, in May 1718, they include Edward Thatch, Blackbeard, Charles Bay, Jack Rackham, Calico Jack, Mary Reed, and Anne Bonny. Here you go, gentlemen. Will that suit you, Jack? Or is it the special that you're after? Special, please, Uzi. Oh, and two more glasses. 
Here you go. If ever the devil cast his net, he'd not find a more villainous lot than sat round this table. I expect you know Jack Martin here, Ben Ornigal's quartermaster. Well, if it isn't the most fearsome, vicious pirate, Blackbeard. <laughs> the great devil, the Spanish do say. Tis good to see you, Thatch. Charles Vane. <laughs> You're still sharp, I see. Oh, yes. Are you still being nice into your crew? <laughs> Me? They'll vote you out, mind. <laughs> Edward England. <laughs> Can I told you. How are you both? Huh? Hey. <laughs> Edward. Quartermaster to Charles now, I hear. <laughs> you best keep your men in line for him. He'll have you all the more. <laughs> uh, Jack. <laughs> You still have a million problems. No. <laughs> You're going to have to get married and settle down. Oh, we can see her. Hi, morning, Captain. Time for a rum or two? You'll be wanting to know the recent events here, I dare say. That's right, Edward. Now, John here just been telling me how Benjamin Ornigold is taking the King's Parliament. Oh, hi. That's right. After the mutiny, it was. He was cast away with me and a few of the men and we came back here. I was captain of his finest prize vessel then. We went off ourselves to the Gulf of Mexico just after the mutiny. He called the combined crew as what did he mount. He was angry and very upset to be cast adrift on a little sloop with me and a few other men. And we came back here to New Providence. Uh, licking his wounds, was he? Indeed he was. But in December, we heard of the offer of the King's pardon. And off he was, straight away, to Jamaica. The governor there gave him his pardon. The rumor has it that he sent messages to the man Woods Rogers there and then to tell him that he would work for him when we get here. The real dumb court is, I, I didn't see it coming. Well, I hope so I get a chance of a run in with him. <laughs> that scurvy sea. I think by then he was thinking piracy was done. Although it was so soon after you declared our power for public. Pirates for public. Uh, I think things came to end for him late last year. Just about the time his crew lost their hats. <laughs> lost their hats? Come on, that there must be a story there. <laughs> It was very hot. It was a long, rum-laden day on board, sharing out prize booty and singing. And after a particularly rousing chorus, all the men they threw their hats and caps up in the air, and a great gust of wind did come and blow them all out. <laughs> <laughs> the men's skulls were burned so bad when they woke up on deck next morning. Only old. He stops a merchantman midstream, but all he took were the crew's hats! <laughs> Completely more of the cargo of spices and silks they did now! Oh, you can imagine what that's going to do to a man who wants any trouble, especially amongst his crew! Oh, indeed! Uh, how the world changes! Uh, no one thought Ben Hornigon would be first to take the pardon! Uh, surprise me, alright! Show me the ropes he did! I gave you my first command of that prize last year. Honey all was finished by then. And he knew it. Mm. As far as his men were concerned, he was no longer a pirate, eh? Will you take the King's pardon too, then, John? <laughs> Not me. The, the, this pirate's life suits me well. And I, I'm looking for a berth, Captain, if you don't me. John, you mentioned Woods Rogers. I... Captain Pierce talked about him too, back in February. He's coming out to govern us as a British colony, with a Royal Navy force, and 150 of his own men-at-arms. He's got the King's blessing, and that of all the governors of the Carolinas, Bermuda, and Jamaica. Well, do you know all that then, Jack? All manner of men come in my bar. Oh, I hear things. Mm. Well, never mind about all that. Now, Fatch, did I see you with one or two vessels this time? 
One or two, is it? More like seven vessels. Seven hundred men in all. Main critters mostly too, so you better, you better post watch on your rumstones tonight, Charles. This town's gonna be busy. You mark my words. And it'll be four times bigger once we moor ashore. Yeah. Oh! While you're at it, yeah. won't you dredge this arm before I'm back oh, in the next time? Yes, yes I'll get it. all my fleet on you. That is a good old fetch. Where did they all come from? Very good old, yeah. Yeah, mostly from the Gulf of Mexico. That's why we're here. Share out the spoils amongst the crew, give them a good night ashore. <laughs> in that case, be sure to direct them to my bar on the falls where they're first. The money is spent. They'll be sure of a good welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I will, Jack, that I will, you can be sure of it. But first, how is this King's Act of Grace being received hereabouts, huh? Now, all in all, it was a surprise. How'd the rest of you say it? Captain Pierce signed up 210 men for the pardon back in February. Once Horny Gold said piracy's got no future, more and more began to agree. Some are putting down roots now with plantations or trade and a few families. I wouldn't pay any attention to what Pierce says. He'll say or do anything to get men to sign up. He even put me in jail just to make a point. <laughs> Boy, and he let you have charges too when he realised you were having the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> to our way of thinking. Yes, yes, that's right. And pardoned men are back with us, pirating again. Oh, we don't give a fart for the King's act oh, of grace. Right. Not when there's pickings to be had by all hereabouts. Yeah, for all of us. Pickings all right, especially now the Navy's gone. We got back just days ago from our short cruise with seven French prizes and 75 more credits! Yeah, that is excellent! All of which helps me protect the arbor from the likes of Pierce and Woods Rogers. You could join us, Thatch. Then we should have force enough to give the likes of Pierce and his ilk a good run for their money! I admire your pluck, Charles. Maybe it's so. But. If Holy Gold is right in the action he's taken, and we need to know the cut of his jib. Now, what can you tell me about this fella? Hmm? Who? Cook, the author of this book. No! The commander of the voyage he's wrote about. Woods Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> He's headed here right now. I first came across him in uh, 1696, Bristol Harbour. Now we're about the same age, and he had this reputation then for his exploits as a sea captain in Newfoundland. Didn't hear much about him since until I came across this book of Edward Cook's. Talking about their privateering voyage around the world. Now Cook says that Woods Rogers was received as a national hero when he returned to London for all the prizes won, but that he took no great reward for himself. Now it was he who thought up this scheme of the King's pardon, mostly for his own benefit, I reckon. But be that as it may, he's coming for us, and he's coming for New Providence. I need to know more about it. What's Roger? I did not. Well, Get off him, you bill sucking <laughs> son of a biscuit eater! <laughs> a friend of yours, Roger! <laughs> That's right, standing on his way, Charles! <laughs> I didn't know you had friends, Jack. Introduce us, why don't you? Ahoy there, Jack. Looking for more crew, are you? There's plenty of ships in the harbour. <laughs> Gentlemen, these two are 
Mark Reed and, and Drew Barney. Her small crew members of mine. Mark and Drew. You should know these gentlemen and give them some respect. Blackbeard. Jacques Martin. Charles Fain. And Edward England. Fine company indeed. Maybe we should join them, Mark. Might learn a thing or two. Maybe we should, Andrew. <laughs> or maybe we could win ourselves a berth on the next cruise. Why? <laughs> I'll give you two a berth and then flay you alive for your insolence. Let me buy you control, a toss of rum, and then you might be on your way. Give them both a tuck of rum, please, Susie. <laughs> I knew he was a wrong one. The minute I laid eyes on him. I know it. Come on. I know it. Come on, get out of here. I didn't know. Come on. I was with Edward Rogers on the island. And when he took the gold from the galleon. That! You sailed with Woods Rogers. I, I did that. I stood by him when we attacked the Devon Daniel and won all that gold and treasure. I'd never seen anything like it. And there he was, on deck, Arthur's vase blown away by a shot, and the musket ball still in there. Blood everywhere there were. He wouldn't go below to the surgeon. He sat at the butt of the mainmast, he did, and wrote out all his orders for the officers. He wanted the men to see him, still a biting and a giving orders. Do you see? To give them heart a most determined enemy he'd be. He never gives up. You could kill him, and he'd still come at you. That is what Cook says in his book. A good commander, fair to his officers and men, hard as nails in battle. And we know he's an ambitious man. He has the support of the king, the navy, and 150 of his own men at arms. Not so good for you taking over a new province, Charles. I uh, don't know about that. But if that is what Commander Rogers says, then that is what he will do. Wait. With respect, if I were you, I take the king's pardon and head on out to New Providence soon as you can. This pirate's life will soon be over and the hands will begin. You mark my words. has made me that shit. Look, Woods Rogers is a threat, I know, but he isn't taking control of my island. Between us, with the ships and men we've got, we could defend New Providence. I, I, and send the likes of Rogers away with his tail between his legs. I'll bow to no governor, save myself. But I'll need some help. Now how do we go about it? Now Jack here, he's with me. Thatch, will you help us? Yes, Charles, you are right. I'm staying. And I will join you right enough with my crew. I am too, Charles. We did well on that last trip. And I ain't about to change my colours now. 
Charles, I know you want to set yourself up as the king of New Providence now that Horny Gold is gone, but you are going to have to do it without me. Touch! Ah. Woods Rogers on his own, maybe. The Royal Navy on their own, maybe. We've stood against them before, but not all together. Now, I'm headed for South Carolina. See what spoils I can find there. I'm sorry I cannot be with you, but I see the signs. Roger has been very clever with this King's pardon. He set pirate against pirate, brother against brother. Change is coming whether we like it or not. What do we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Blackbeard's fleet sailed to Charlestown where they blockaded the harbour. Soon afterwards, they sailed northeast to Ocracoke Island off North Carolina, where mysteriously Blackbeard's vessel, the Queen Anne's Revenge, sunk. Meanwhile, Charles Vane enjoyed his status as King of the Island for just three weeks until Woods Rogers arrived on July the 26th. That night, with Rogers anchored outside the harbour, Vane set loose a fire ship inside it and took off. As he exited the harbour, he fired a broadside against one of Woods Rogers' vessels and the chase was on. But they stood down. Bain's vessel was swifter. By September, all pirates were to renounce their piracy or else risk arrest and imprisonment. Most did. True to their word, Rackham, Vane, Bonnie, Reed, and Blackbeard did not. So, Woods Rogers appointed Benjamin Hornigold as pirate hunter, with orders to capture Vane Rackham and their crew, but they proved elusive. He returned instead in October with ten other pirates captured off Jamaica. That same month, Vane and Rackham sailed up to Ocracroke Island to try and convince Blackbeard once again to join forces with them. But he himself now wanted to take the pirate pardon and return to a normal life. They soon went their separate ways. The next month, November, Blackbeard himself was killed in a battle by a young British naval lieutenant. His seven head was placed high on a bowsprit for all to see. In New Providence in December, Governor Woods established a court tried, convicted, and hanged nine of those ten captured pirates. In just five months after his arrival, Woods was secure. The main threat from the pirates was over. It was a new world order. After Woods' arrival, Anne Bonnie was living with Rackham, who had bought her out of her previous marriage. She met Mary on the island. Now, Woods knew all about Anne because of her loose behaviour, and he threatened to make Jack Rackham beat her in public unless she improved her ways. From New Providence, Jack and Charles and Mary would go a pirating of the Bahamas, Hispaniola, Cuba, and Jamaica. Sometimes Rackham and Vane sailed together, but in 1719 Rackham led a mutiny against Vane and took 50 crew members to Jamaican waters. Vane, meanwhile, was set adrift with 15 men in a small sloop. Jack, Anne and Mary took the pirate pardon in 1719, but in less than a year they were off again a pirating, sailing off Jamaican waters. Woods Rogers declared them to be enemies of the crown of Great Britain. 
and the Boston Gazette carried that proclamation. They were captured, celebrating after raiding a privateer who successfully returned the challenge. They surrendered and they were taken to Port Royal Jail where Rackham and his crew were tried, convicted and sentenced to be hanged. Mary and Anne, notorious women pirates, pled their bellies, were found to be indeed pregnant and so spared. The court heard how they dressed, cursed and drank like men were fierce fighters, first on deck two fights and gave no quarter. It is the morning Calico Jack is to be hanged. In the jail, Mary and Anne are talking. Mr. Spotty. <coughs> Don't you earn me, Calico Jack Rackham. If you fought like a man, you need not be hanged like a dog. That's not fair, Anne. I fought alongside of you and Mary. You're the captain! You should have made the cowardly scum come on deck and fight. I shot them where they stood. You did that all right, Anne. You and Mary would have taken on the whole ship. I guard Anne. I shall miss you. Darling, it'd be hard to say goodbye. But I shouted at him, Mary. It's his fault that we're here, but he's gonna die for it. Oh, Mary. He was a scurvy knave and a rotten pirate. And we won more prizes for the crew than he did. But he's me man. And the father of my child. We shouldn't be here with the threat of the gals hanging over us. Living wild and free on the high seas, taking what we wanted and did not take the high boats. We were only pirates for a short while, but sure we should be, darling, sure we should. And remembering that we were free to eat weevily biscuits, rotten meat, and live as men with so many pirates. <laughs> oh, but we sure them how to do it. That was not as violent as we. And we can best any man with a sword or a pistol. Aye, and we were always the first to board a vessel and the first to draw blood. <laughs> Five times to be <laughs> What are you two jumping around for? You'll be jumping from the gallows yourself yeah. soon enough. We are remembering old and good times. Besides, we have a foolproof plan to avoid hanging, which will be revealed in good time. <laughs> And we were always the first to board a ship when the grappling hooks took hold, you know. Yeah, did you know that Mary once bought her? I did not. Hey! Those prisoners' property, you know. What do you care? We're just going to show you how it went. Uh, my man picked a fight with the man who challenged him to a duel. <laughs> but that man with the seasoned pirate used to brutal fighting. <laughs> my man was an enforced man, an able seaman, but a terrible fighter. <laughs> Oh, but I am the better swordsman, so I challenge that same man to fight before he fight man for him. <laughs> no, not so fierce, Anne. I bloody won that duel, so stand down. I screwed him. Uh -huh. And so you are. And I'm not renowned for my soul. That you 
are not. <laughs> uh, you, we need to top a rub after all that there fighting. We certainly do not need any rub to fight with. That's how we came to be here, got caught in the first place. I heard stories about that. But you can't believe all you hear in them pirate dens. What have you heard? Oh, just that you were a thorn in the side of Governor Woodbottom's. <laughs> and that uh, he was after your eyes after you stole a sloop from New Providence Harbour. Mm, no, that... And the Governor commissioned Captain Barnett to capture you and Captain Jack and your crew after you reported pirate in round Jamaica no, waters. No, that we did. Jack, Mary and me and six crew took the William right out the harbour under their noses. Do tell. The William was a tidy craft, as I recall. Apart from Captain Barnett's vessel, which caught you. I heard so. <laughs> <laughs> My husband! Rotten! But not let me be. Even though we paid him off. And when Roger said I would be wit. So I said, I would be a good girl and go back to him and be a model wife from then on. But I had no intention of leaving Jack. So we had to get away to sea. Uh, what about me then? That goes without saying a lot. So Jack had noticed this sloop in the harbour belonging to one John Ham. I thought that if we got away at all, we needed a fast ship like that. I went on board a few times as a new member of crew and no one seemed that interested in me. And I also noticed that on board, there were only ever two men on watch. So it was easy to row out as soon as we could on board her. It was so <laughs> easy. <laughs> oh. Oh. There was no resistance. Oh. So we sailed slowly out the harbour. And every time we were challenged, we said the anchor slipped. And when we could see the open sea with dust falling, we caught the sails. I ran for it. Ah, oh, it was so smooth. We sailed east pirating along the way. And then to avoid the governor's ships, we turned south down to Hispaniola. We had a run of good luck getting valuable prizes along the way. And then we headed on to Jamaica. Well, things were so good, and you had such a far ship, how come you here? As Mary says, we were doing well. We boarded a schooner and struck lucky. Her cargo was uh, tobacco, pimentos. That's all I tackled on board. Yeah, rich pickings to be sure. <laughs> we was at anchor and the crew were well into their cups of rum. Uh, Mary and I were standing watching deck and a sloop slipped past us. For some reason it sent a cold shudder down my spine. It was a government sloop, uh, captained by one Jonathan Barnett, commissioned to capture us. Although we didn't know that at the time. And we shouted for the crew to come on down! Ah, Jack came, and one or two others. But the rest of the two dropped the stand, <laughs> let alone fight. But Jack manned the swivel gun and, 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 and raped the side of the ship. They returned fire and disabled us, so we could leave a return fire and run. But Jack surrendered at that point. Cowardly dog. Aye, right. but we wanted to fight on, so we stood on deck and we dared any of the governor's men to step on deck and we would chop them in half. Mary shouted for the crew to come on deck. Ah! If there be a man among ye, you come up and you fight like the man you ought to be. But no king. Mary was enraged. Her blood was up with the fight, you understand. She fired her pistol into the hole and killed one <laughs> and injured others. But it did no good. And here we are. And Jack is hanged. <laughs> so, did he? How come you're so interested in pirates? I was one myself, till I got blown up. I sailed on the Bashima with Captain James. Charles Vane was one of our number. I was ship's cook, and Vane was just one of the crew. 
Well, we took a broadside on one raid, and I got it. Got blown up pretty bad. Took compensation, went ashore. I was no good for sailor anymore. Well, I met my wife, and her brother got me a job here. Let's see, you didn't sail as part of Vane's crew. No, he became captain after I came ashore. But I wouldn't have sailed with him given the choice. Right? He was successful, but not surprises for his crew. But he was a nasty piece of work. And treated all who came in his way with cruelty and torture. <clears throat> Jack was Vane's quartermaster for a time. The challenge Vane when he stopped the crew taking a French warship. The crew supported Jack, promoted him captain and said, Jack took over the pirate brigantine and sent Bane and a few men who supported him off in a sloop. I heard about that. Charles Bane had no luck after that. I wonder what happened to Bane. He was a right bastard. But I like to think there were still pirates out there roaming <laughs> the seas. <laughs> He's here! What? He's here in Port Royal Jail. His ship got wrecked by hurricane and he had to strand up on an island. He was rescued by a captain, uh, Holford, uh, who, who recognised him of old. And he took him prisoner and then he rested. I'm saying, Captain, stop buckets and bring out the rations. I'll be taking yours with me. Well, bring it back as soon as you can. My stomach is turning with the rum. Long we toss on the rolling main, now we're safe ashore, Jack. Don't forget your old shipmate, Rolly, 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 Rolly. Mary Reed died in prison of a fever in childbirth in March 1721. Charles Vane was hanged there in the same month. And his body, like that of Rackham's, was hung from a gibbet and placed in a prominent position in the harbour. The two corpses within sight of each other. Anne Bonny's wealthy father may have bought her out of prison. Leastways, she returned to Carolina, where she married, had eight children, and died in 1782, aged 84. The only one of our pirates to survive. These events mark the beginning of the end of the golden age of piracy. After 1727, there was no problem. The Bahamas Islands Assembly coined a motto to underline its significance. Pirates expelled, commerce restored. And that was still in use up to 1973. So, do you remember the conversation I had with those two lads, Woods Rogers and his friend Robert Williams, all those years ago? Well, Woods Rogers, as you've seen, certainly fulfilled the life plan he outlined for me that day. I lost touch with Robert. He did not become Mayor of Poole. But I did. And he was wrong. Being mayor is not easy. So, hands up those of you who knew nothing about Woods Rogers and the Pirates before today and have learned something. Good. Well, I think it's time to hear some more, don't you? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning, hooray that she rises, hooray that she rises, hooray that she rises, early in the morning. Put him in the lifeboat till he's sober, put him in the lifeboat till he's sober, put him in the lifeboat till he's sober. Shave his belly with a rusty razor, 
Lock him in the cabin with the captain's daughter. Lock him in the cabin with the captain's daughter. Lock him in the cabin with the captain's daughter. Lie in the morning. Hooray, up she rises. Hooray, up she rises. Hooray, up she rises. Lie in the morning. Have you seen the captain's daughter? Have you seen the captain's daughter? Have you seen the captain's daughter? Lie in the morning. Hooray, up she rises. Hooray.